Hi everyone, this is video number two in a series of videos intended to help you with your bomb calorimetry lab. In this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate the heat capacity, C, of the calorimeter itself. And in order to do that, we need to take all of our data from the benzoic acid lab. So C is what we want. I'm gonna write that down there. I'm gonna write down a few other quantities that I've found. I'm going to assume that you watched video number one for the bomb calorimetry lab and that you've performed the analysis for benzoic acid and you found some sort of delta T. Now I'm just going to use a value that I happened to measure sometime in the past for delta T. You are going to have a different delta T value than I did. Um, so uh, make sure that you use your value when doing your analysis, not mine. So I found that my delta T was 2.52 degrees C. And by the way, that is exactly the same as 2.52 Kelvin when it comes to delta T. There is no need to add 273.15 to this number right here. This one is good enough as it is for our purposes for delta T. Okay, what else do we have? I'm assuming that you've found the delta L, which was the length of wire that was combusted in the experiment. And I measured eight centimeters of my wire combusted away. All right. I'm also going to uh, write down the mass of the pellet of benzoic acid which was 0 0.9716 grams. All right, so it looks like we're about to, about ready to begin with the analysis. To begin, I'm going to calculate Q of the sample. That was the amount of heat released by the benzoic acid. And this is going to equal a number that you should have found written on the side of the bottle of the benzoic acid pellets, 26.9716. 454 megajoules per kilogram multiplied times um, the mass of the sample. However, I don't want to deal in megajoules per kilogram. I can actually convert megajoules to kilojoules and kilograms to grams, and I'm going to get 26.454 kilojoules per gram because the mass of my pellet is in grams I don't want to have to deal in kilograms all right so multiplied times the mass of my pellet 9716 grams and when I plug that into my calculator I get 25.703 kilojoules of heat released by my sample and then I can straight away just convert that to joules by multiplying times a thousand. 25,703 joules of heat released by my benzoic acid pellet. Next, I'll need the amount of heat released by the combustion of the wire. And that's going to be equal to delta L times 9.6 joules per centimeter. And I measured my delta L to be 8.0 centimeters. And I calculate that to equal 76.8 joules. Oh, and I'm going to keep track of my sig figs here, not to forget. I have four sig figs in my mass, so that means that's my sig fig there. And I have two sig figs in my Q wire, so there's my sig fig right there. Okay, now if you look in your protocol, you'll need to use the following equation. The total heat released by both the wire and the sample is equal to Q wire plus Q sample. And so that's just going to equal 76.8 joules plus 2 5703 joules. Notice that I had to convert this number from joules to kilojoules so that I could add the two together at this step. 
Because if I tried to add joules and kilojoules together, I would get the wrong answer. You have to add and subtract things that are the same units. So this equals 25,780. There's my sig fig right there, joules. Okay, now looking back in the protocol, I find the following equation that C, the heat capacity of the calorimeter, equals Q tot divided by delta T. So now I plug in all my values. 25,780 joules divided by 2.52 Kelvin. That equals 10,230 joules per Kelvin. And that is the heat capacity for the bomb calorimeter as far as I measured it. So when you do your analysis, you should get a very similar heat capacity for your bomb calorimeter, maybe plus or minus 500 joules per Kelvin or so, something like that. Okay, now I would like to reiterate the point that all these numbers up here need to be plugged in for what you measured specifically. You should not just use these numbers. These are the numbers that I measured myself, but you need to plug in the numbers that you measured yourself. And if you do reuse any of my numbers, you need to make sure that you understand that the numbers are supposed to be the same between when I ran the experiment and when you did. So, um, thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully you will find this video and the other ones helpful, and uh, I hope you'll continue on and watch the other, other videos in this series as well.